Hi everybody and welcome to this edition of Thinking Out Loud. This is your chance to give us whatever type of feedback you would like. Our topic today is challenges and so we're going to jump into it. My name is Arizona Lowe, I'll be your host and with me is Rain Dow, my beautiful co-host and wing woman. Hi Rain. Hi, nice to be here. Thank you Arizona. And also with us is Karen Chen. Hi Karen. Hi. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, now we've had a big round of applause. Um, Karen, how do you define an internet challenge and what is it about them that is so you're so passionate about? I think my definition of an internet challenge, or I call it social challenges now, because um, if you if you look at it in terms of, I could be on I could be on Google Plus, you could be on Instagram, um, Rain could be on Facebook, and we all could be doing the same challenge, and we're we're basically taking it on and sharing that with our own um, followers or our audience. Um, the idea for me in terms of internet challenges, I find that they kind of actually stretch and grow you because you are sharing your stuff with hopefully with, with the with the with the people who are taking on the challenge and you actually get to learn from each other um, about particular items that you may not necessarily know about and learn from. So I find that pretty interesting when it comes to taking on challenges. Do you um, learn about yourself as well during a challenge? Yeah, I've really I mean I have never really taken on internet challenges until literally becoming to being on Google Plus and the reasons why I started these challenges was I usually to be honest I was looking to figure out how to create original content so the first challenge I took on was I think a, a staple that you see around um, the social platforms is one that's on um, Instagram and I've seen it on other places which is called the 30 day photography challenge in November and I basically just I, I kept it really simple I just looked at the list um, and every day I would take a picture or look in my camera on my um, iPhone and just um, take that picture and then post it and, and talk about it and I also learned was was doing the challenge I was really raw at writing content and so I just started with like one sentence and and kept going day after day and then I thought oh I should use a hashtag and that got me some more as they call juice so people were starting to kind of follow and then I started kind of getting a following on my pictures and so by the end of that challenge in November after taking 30 pictures I started really getting some traction in terms of engagement and people you know wanting to know more about my pictures and telling me their stories about you know when these what, how I touch them by my pictures, which I thought was really cool. That is really really cool. And just talking about um, being social, Karen. I just want to um, pin up a couple of comments here. We've got TLC Photography, who is saying this is going to be a fabulous show. Karen Beachin rocks. She has some exciting oh. stuff going on. Oh, thank you. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. That's social in or social internet and, and internet challenge. And then we've got Rob Ox in the audience saying he wanted to thank Sudesh Solanki. I hope I pronounced that correctly for sharing this event with with them. They're looking forward to watching. So we hope you're there. And we're we're glad you we're glad you're looking forward to it. And of course the beautiful Catherine Will Fong. She's looking saying it's looking like another amazing show. So we're glad to have you here, Catherine. That's awesome. Oh, and we've got Dr. Tammy Cashin. Nice to see you here, Dr. Tammy Cashin. <laughs> Hi, Dr. Tammy. Dr. Tammy, yeah, awesome. She, she's an amazing woman, too. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and one that I think would be very interested in um, some of these challenges. Mm -hmm. um, but you know there are things that keep people from wanting to become involved in challenge and I think the greatest one of those is a fear of failure. You know either they're afraid mm -hmm. that they're going to be laughed at, their content's not going to be good enough or they're also maybe afraid that they cannot achieve the challenge you know on a daily basis especially these ones that are 30 days or you know 365 days like the one I tried last year <laughs> and failed. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think I think the thing about failure when it comes to those types of challenges, also, I find is that um, 
you know, of course, is devoting the time. But I also think if you try and also have a support group or or you know someone to help you coach coach you along the way, who may not necessarily be a part of you in terms of you know taking the challenge with you, but just being your raw raw or like Rain is to you, um, Arizona, your your wing woman. Mm -hmm. It's just having that encouragement and and kind of saying to you, hey, I didn't see that post today. Where is it? You need to get it up there. I think that helps. And if you are with a group of people who are taking on those challenges, you know, for example, like I know like Ironman or, you know, one of those types of where your endurance, you're basically with the team and you're just kind of self, you're motivating yourself and you don't want to let the team go and down by not participating. So that kind of encourages you to kind of get out and actually do it. So you just kind of have to find that medium where I think having a support team to help you with the challenge, whether they're doing it themselves, but just being just the raw, you just, everyone needs their own cheerleader. I, I mean, I really believe that. Um, and you I've learned that, and these, especially here in social media, they may not necessarily be partaking, but they great get great enjoyment reading about your post. So you feel like, okay, I wrote something really great yesterday. I got to put something up today so that I can, you know, you kind of get off on that energy in that vibe. Yeah, I agree with that. And you, you do, um, you do something interesting too, Karen. You do a bit of repurposing. So basically, you'll start this challenge, and you won't just post it on, say, you were saying earlier, you won't just post it on Google+, Plus. you'll post it on Instagram as well. Is that what your experiment with the challenge was about? Yeah, so for the for the November challenge, which was my first one, I wanted to kind of also test Instagram too. So I, I, I basically take the, took the same image and posted it on Instagram and then I posted it on Google. Of course, Google, you can talk a lot more versus Instagram. Um, and I found that it was interesting because there's di different demographics with you know with each platform that um, Instagram it's much more focused of course on fashion um, food lots of you know a lot of foodies out there and more of a lifestyle kind of thing versus on Google Plus people really kind of wanted to know more about um, you know more about experiences and you can actually do that because you know with Google you can you can be writing you know, you know, I call them, I call them that toward the end, like mini blogs of, of describing what that what that photograph was like, which you can't do on Instagram. Have um, Have you used Pinterest at all for your challenges? Yeah, um, all three challenges now are been I've I basically consider Pinterest kind of like my filing cabinet where I've taken all of the Google um, content that I've created and basically have, have created a board for each of them. So I can share the link if anyone's interested. I've got them all kind of lined up where you can easily just kind of see all 30 days in one area, and you can just pin away if you want to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, and you've got. Sorry, sorry. Go on. There's one. I was just going to ask because we were talking about failure and we kind of flipped away from it. Uh, mm -hmm. Where there's some, there were some comments from the audience. Were there? Regarding that fear, there there are actually CL Redding had a really good one. I'm just uh, p uh, pinning hers right now, and she she says that her biggest challenge is finding and maintaining enthusiasm in the in the, in the face of the sense of the great futility of it all that sends that tends to send her into retreat. Now she's she's uh, she's wording that. Um, you know, we, we also had another one from um, a, another viewer who is basically saying the same type of thing that um, she loves a good aspect of, mm -hmm. challenge, of challenge in any aspect of her life, but it is the thought of failing at that challenge that gets, that gets her every time. Mm -hmm. So that's what that's what she's struggling with, which which sounds a great deal like what CL Reading is struggling with as well. So yeah. So Karen, would you have any advice for Christine, uh, CL Reading, and Debbie? Yeah, I think it's you know, you you get really gung ho in the first couple of days because you you know. You think of it like New, Year, New Year's resolutions, right? Where the, you know the first week everyone's really excited. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And by the you know the fourth day, you've given up and you're you know a couch potato and you're watching TV again. Or I think they say that um, you join a gym and literally by the end of the month in, in, of January, no one's at the gym anymore. So I think you got to start slow and kind of 
I how I do my challenges, and I think how I kind of looked at my life now is you got to break it down where it's like bits, you know, compartmentalize it, where you're just taking a small task and just just focus on that task. And when you succeed on that task, then you go on to the next, and then you go on to the next, and then you can kind of turn around and look and go, wow, I'm actually accomplishing me accomplishing that goal, and you're building on that. And I think. That's kind of where I think you get so overwhelmed, where you're like, okay, I need to do this, I need to, I need to paint the room, but in actuality, you you really need to kind of focus on like, I need to go to the paint store, I need to figure out what color paint I want, and just kind of break it down that way, so that if you don't feel like, oh, I've got to paint the room, and you just get so overwhelmed. I think it's just again, it's time, of course, but I think it's also making sure that you chunk it where it's nice compartmentalized and you can you can just see that there's little things that I don't say little but things that you can do right then and there which will take you to the next step. Well yeah. I think mm -hmm. also that people need to think ahead of time before jumping mm -hmm. into a challenge kind of like with your 28 day challenge which we're going to talk about here in a few. Mm -hmm. um, you know make sure that you can actually give the time that necessary for it you know, do some pre-planning. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, you, I mean you're allotting yourself time to do it too, you know, per day. Well, I know I think, I mean, especially I think for women in general, we I think we have a tendency of kind of overextending ourselves, where we are like, I can do this, I can do that, I can do that, and then you just get, again, so overwhelmed and nothing gets done. I think if you, if you can pick, like, you know, the top three things that you can accomplish today and just kind of focus on that, I mean that alone will feel accomplishment, and so that the next day you're going, okay, I didn't do what I was supposed to do. Not, not that you didn't do, but you didn't do the other items. But you just kind of keep going, and you know, prioritization too. So I think that helps too. Yeah, that's a really good point. And just to address, um, because it sort of sounded like people were talking about um, failure, so I'm mm -hmm. just going to pin up. I'm just going to pin up one of your quotes from your 30 Days of Inspiration Challenge, Karen. And that's where you said mistakes are the portals of discovery. Yeah, I really, so how I was actually doing this 30 days of inspiration challenge to give you some background is I was taking my, my, my photos and just picking out it, quotes that I found interesting on the internet. Mm -hmm. And that one in particular I liked that day was in how it married the two was because that was actually um, my attempt at um, Japanese Reku pottery. Mm -hmm. And the idea with that is basically there is no perfection. You just kind of you just kind of paint how you feel, and you and then also the big part of that um, I guess pottery is it goes into a kiln, and that is really kind of the telltale sign of what you did that day. Not exactly kind of painting in detail, but it's more of a kind of a brushstroke um, approach where you're just kind of exploring and just kind of feeling how you are, and just and it's not like you know you're drawing within the lines obviously but when you look at that you're just feeling and, and dabbling with the paint and, and it, I think it comes from within you, yourself which I which I actually kind of found really um, enjoying and liberating in a way because you're you're just kind of freeing yourself and I think if you, if you do that that makes a big difference. And the way I discovered that was through my nature of photography um, where I mean if you look at some of the flowers that I've taken, them they're gorgeous mm -hmm. pictures, but they're not perfect because you know nature didn't mm -hmm. make any nature perfect flowers. Perfect. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, and that actually speaks to um, Arizona that hundred pick challenge that you posted <laughs> that uh, you invited me into, and I was I I was scared to join it, and it was just it was one one thing to join and that was taking a hundred photos from a hundred different perspectives of one specific wow. um, object or, or whatever it is you chose to be the focus and but the reason I didn't want to join in was because they're all professional photographers and I'm not a professional photographer <laughs> so I was really daunted by the task thinking well my forget it I'm not gonna you know I won't mine won't be very good and so I said something in the in the comments stream. Well, well thank you for inviting me. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think my, I don't think you want to see mine. And they they were really good and they cheered me on and said, no, give it a try, give it a try. And I did. And I you know and it really wasn't so much what the comments were coming back, which were really awesome. It was a really cool cool experiment 
to try because I'd never tried anything like that before. So that was what was so interesting. Uh, I think I did it on water, uh, like some water. Some of it was ice, and there was water running underneath a little stream. <laughs> and it was so cool just to ca try to capture. I had the, the camera like half an inch from the water. <laughs> <laughs> and the people that were with me were going, what are you doing? <laughs> like, I have to get 100 different. <laughs> <laughs> from this angle and, and that angle. And <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah. so, I mean, so you're, you're really focusing on, again, it's kind of that small task. You're just you're so focused on, I got to take pictures of water that you're really not thinking globally again about all the ramifications of what happens if, I, if the camera, or, you know, I don't know whether you were taking from an, a, a smartphone or with an actual camera, but what happens if I get the camera wet? You know, you, you're just kind of so in, you know, excited and like enthralled by it. That's that's what the passion I think is is about challenges is that once you kind of get yourself into the groove it doesn't really you don't really think that it's that difficult like so one of my other challenges that's not necessarily part of um, Google Plus was I was on a rivalry and um, um, rain if you actually look at my profile you could you could see it. it's it's my my pin on, on my profile I like to knit and so I didn't realize how difficult the challenge was until after I've, I've accomplished it. And I, this is my second time doing this. I've, I did it in 2012 and I did it in 2014. And the, and the, the challenge is there's about 6,000 knitters who belong to this particular group in Ravelry.com. And Ravelry is kind of a, a social media, um, I guess, platform for knitters, crocheters, spinners, weavers. And, we, we, and there's like, I think, 4 million of us out there in the world. And the idea of the platform of, of the challenge was you had to knit 12 shawls. So you know the, the granny shawls. You know there's a there's a limit in terms a minimum and a maximum. And there was no maximum, but a minimum in terms of, of yardage that you had to knit. And I didn't realize in my mind again compartmentalized 12 shawls in 2014. So you knit 12. So one a month. Well, sometimes I started late. I started the the challenge I think in March. So I had to I had to knit three at, you know all at once to catch up. And then toward the end, literally, I knitted like, then I spaced it out of this one a month. And at the very end, I had to knit a bunch of them. So again, I think it's just how you mentally prepare yourself to knit this, you know, in my, in my mind, and to just say, hey, I'm just going to do it. And then I didn't realize that of these 6,000 knitters out there who belong to this particular um, group, I'm only a, a one of 110 people that actually accomplished the goal. And then when I did the math in terms of how many of how many you know yards of yarn I knitted, um, I think it was like um, about over five thousand five hundred yards, and about over twenty skeins of twenty balls, just to give twenty balls of yarn. And I've you sat there and thought about like, oh my goodness, I'm gonna have to knit five over five thousand yards and twenty balls. You're never gonna do the challenge because it's just gonna freak you out. Um, yeah, so you exactly. Just, so what I was more focused on, I wanted to learn different projects within knitting and do different things like lace knitting versus color color striping, and, and so that's kind of what I focused on. And so I was just getting into that, and I didn't realize how difficult it was. And the other part of the challenge was you had the post, you know, on a monthly basis, and so you know, there's some criteria here why the numbers dwindled, but of that, you know, 110 people. That means I'm I'm basically one or two percent of the population within this group that actually accomplished the challenge. So to me, I didn't think it was that much, but after when you sit in there and think about it, you're going, "Wow, that's a lot." And so yeah. again, compartmentalize, just take it in bite-sized pieces, you know, just kind of like and enjoy it. And I think that's what also, um, you know, sometimes people get hung up on is that they're not enjoying the challenge, and that's why they they get disenchanted. Yeah. And you and you actually, I'm just um, Arizona. Are you um, pinning the the screen share I have right now? Uh, it's a black screen right now. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay. Mm hmm. Okay. I'll try that again. I've just got the. What I'll do is I'm going to put the link in. Yeah. Just put the link actually, in there. Yeah. And yeah. then it'll show. It'll. Yeah. And you actually got some really good traction on that too, Karen. You had 128 likes on that. Yeah, and I had like I don't know 30 reshares. I there is actually it also interesting within the Google Plus community. There are a lot of knitters out there, and yeah. they're very passionate about their knitting. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So, you know, I'm very, I'm, I'm very well blessed and supported in the community of how, how intense these, these people are. It's kind of like, you know, you, you just don't want to miss with a knitter with their needles, I guess is the best way to describe it. Just, it's, it's a passion. Well, yeah. you, you had um, so many people liking it and, and getting involved mm -hmm. with all your challenges. Um, what did you learn about your audience? through that. I mean, I have a global audience, which is kind of surprising. I did not realize how big a reach you can have with Google Plus. I mean, it's different from any other platform because I you know, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Pinterest. I have a LinkedIn account, even on Twitter. But with Google Plus, I mean, the audience is really devoted and they really encourage you and um and I think especially when I did the thank you challenge for the month of December, the people were so grateful. I didn't realize how much I touched individuals, and people then privately, you know, private messaged me and told them how how blessed, you know, how great that was, and it made their day. So it's part of me again. It's part of the challenge. You're feeling really good because you made someone happy, so you want to do it again and then again and again. So again, it's just it's that motivation and encouragement that you get from challenges that I find that um, it's it's amazing, you know how many people out there who actually read your stuff and that's what I find really interesting about this whole platform is that you write something and somehow it touches somebody and someone comments and that to me is a very powerful um, you know message I mean that's the reason why I'm kind of, I'm hooked on Google Plus is because you just kind of get the high you know you like you want to write something really good and hopefully someone will comment yeah um, yeah I, I can totally understand that because uh, Google I've gotten twice as much traction in you know just a little bit of time compared to the amount of time I've been on Twitter mm -hmm. um, you know I've gotten just a ton of traction on Google Plus mm -hmm. we've got so, a really good comment from uh, Katrina out in the audience too and she's saying I think when you're an entrepreneur there's always a challenge balancing what you need to create for your mm -hmm. own business with the needs of your clients especially as your business starts to grow so Katrina is coming from a, from a a little a different uh, uh, aspect on it there as well that yeah you do you do have to to balance things so that's really good I wanted to kind of what what have you learned about yourself Karen through these challenges what have these challenges kind of you know you did one in November you did one in December and one in January what have you kind of learned about yourself throughout through these challenges I think it's actually given me a lot more self confidence. Um, honestly, because the first time I did it in November was just kind of taking someone else's idea and just kind of taking a picture and then writing about it. The, the December one was, again, thanking people that actually helped me within Google+, Plus, and that was kind of my, my theme. It was someone else's challenge, um, Kimberly Allison, I think is her name, and she, it was her challenge, but I kind of took it to, here's my opportunity to thank all the people who helped me become a better Google+, Plus, you know, member and be a part of of the community because at the time, I mean, literally to this week, I'm at the end of my 15th week here at, at Google Plus, so that was my way of doing it. And then January's challenge was taking what I learned from the two challenges and creating my own challenge. So basically, taking content, um, my own my own photos, and marrying that with um, quotes that I find and what what that meant to me. So I'm finding that it's giving me a platform to be a writer that I think I didn't think I had. Um, I think it's also given me the idea of also practice, 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 because you you don't you don't paint the Mona Lisa at the very first you know time you pick up a paintbrush, right? You gotta like practice. Exactly. And so I've learned I've learned that you know doing that, and I also have learned to to kind of experiment and to kind of build on where I'm you know adding links and and I'm I'm finding things that you know I want to add to in terms of thinking that it might for the audience as they're reading it oh yeah I'm, I'm kind of interested and here's more information so I'm, I'm finding kind of a, my way um, in terms of I guess being um, I, I wouldn't say a blogger more per se because I, I see more of these are more micro blog blogging because to me I, you know I, blogging I, I, that to me is a challenge because I would think oh you gotta sit there and what are you gonna write about to me how I'm writing is based on you know the day of and what I'm interested in and that's kind of how I write so it's kind of, it's I think it's different but that's how I work so and so you, this you work with what you you work with what you got yeah yeah 
And so this whole experience has um, led you to create a challenge for the Google Plus community. Do you think you can give us like a five minute wrap on that? Okay, um, yeah, so again, because I'm, a new, I'm still relatively a newbie here on the platform, that I know that there are other newbies out there, or people who um, don't, don't feel comfortable with that because they don't think they're a good writer. Like for me, I mean, one, of, one of the days I wrote was, you know, I'm still afraid of the red pen. You know, English 1A in college was a terrifying experience. I, I mean, if someone's sister and crosses red ink on me, I'm like freaking out. Like my blood pressure goes. So I was thinking of the tw this, this challenge I wanted to create was to write about stuff that you love and that you're passionate about. And since the month of February is a really good chance to do that because it's the month of love, here's a, a really great opportunity to do that. And to also give you kind of some background on this challenge is, I am part of um, Plus Your Business. Um, it's a um, a community for people who are devout Google Plus and for you know again Plus Your Business for for business, and it's run by Martin Sherrington. And I um, I'm an Academy student, so I actually have networked with a lot of people here on Google Plus. And one of them, her name is Susan um, Susan Shangle. Shangle, I was hoping I'm not saying her name wrong, out in New Zealand, and she and I were talking on New Year's Eve about challenges and how much she she was thinking that I should do an, another challenge for February, and that's kind of how we came up with this love theme of writing about what I love, and I thought, well, other people would have the same you know, concept. I was like, let's you know, write about that. And then I had another individual within um, plus your business. His name is Ray Lay and he's out in Mexico. He keeps correcting me because originally was calling this a 30 day challenge. He goes, no, it's 28 days because it's the month of February. So that's kind of the context of it. So the idea is to just write and have, I have a list of um, items that you take, take a picture every day. So Rain, if you love water, there is, I think there is a, a there is something about water in one of my one of my daily challenges that you can take a picture of. Okay. And you, you've got 28 days to take individual pictures, or you have in within your camera, um, you might have photos on your uh, on your iPhone or your Android that you can use so to make it kind of easy, so you don't have to like I have to take a picture that day, and all you have to do is just write two a minimum of two sentences of why you love this, and so the idea is to open up on Google Plus to share your interests, and so that hopefully like-minded people out there who would be interested in water. I could could talk to you about that, and you never know how that could lead to because it, again, it's conversation. And I, what I found when I was doing all of my challenges, someone could be interested in um, my dogs, and then they're interested in um, um, learning more about um, social media in terms of Twitter. And I post you know multiple things on my pro on my profile, multiple subjects. So. I, I think it just you you just get more you become more attracted to others when you start opening up and talking about yourself because there's a there's a commonality that someone finds about yourself. So that's kind of what the challenge is about. It's just exploring your your self discovery, letting the world see that, and hopefully that will again you're able to meet and build relationships from that. And and of course you're you're. Um wanting people, maybe even challenging people to do more than just hit the plus one? Yeah, I mean, I, it'd be <laughs> great if everyone could comment and talk about it, because that's what I find interesting, is that when people start commenting, truly commenting, and not just saying, oh, great, thanks, but saying, you know, Rain, that is a lovely blue um, red jacket you're wearing today. Where did you get that? Again, that starts the conversation. And, you know, mm -hmm. the next day, you might post another item that, again, conversation starts. So it, it leads to, I think also, I found was when you start talking about other things besides business, it gets back to business. So for me, I also have learned that talking about dogs, cats, flowers, you know, food has led back to, okay, so what do you actually do for a living? And then that kind of starts the conversation. So this challenge in a lot of ways is kind of like a like an icebreaker where you kind of share a little bit about yourself and 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 people kind of see that whether or not they want to work with you or whether or not to communicate with you so that's to me is what this challenge is all about plus the idea is also globally if everyone's doing this challenge we can learn a little bit about each other and our cultures and you know what's going on in other parts of the world so that's that's another reason why and at the end of it you've got 28 days you're going to have 28 posts, 
you can, I think, um, uh, Arizona, you were talking about, you were thinking about writing, you know, if you join, you're joining a challenge, you can use that as your, your day as part of your original content. So again, right. it's not like you're just isolating, you have to do this, and you only have to do it for this way. You kind of think of broadly that you could take this challenge and repurpose it. Maybe, you know, feel free to put this on, on Pinterest, or feel free to put this on Facebook, or feel free to put this on, um, um, Instagram, because I'm gonna do. I'm definitely putting this on Instagram too. So just because you've got this content, you might as well share it. And at the end of it, you're gonna have a nice little portfolio of what you've accomplished. And you're gonna be amazed about. I think at the end of it, like I felt with these challenges, you'll know a little bit more about yourself, and you'll be able to kind of here show somebody whether you put it on on your website, LinkedIn, you know, repurpose it. You'll have a body of work. So it's not like you're wasting time. You're actually doing something productive. And you're going to be able to write better, be, write better posts at the end of it, I think, after 20 tries of doing this. Well, then that's, that's what was going to be my comment was that, you know, you'll improve. And you'll, you'll see <laughs> your improvement because you'll <laughs> see where you went from day one to day 28. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, and then also, and too, just, we have this community to join. So you publish it in publicly, but then you also can publish it within the community. And within that group, again, there will be a, a structure where you can actually meet. Um, Rain, I think you've, your screen is black. Yeah. Uh, I, I do not understand. It's not OK. So for some reason, it's not sharing the community. But if a person goes into, I think um, I put a link on it. Yeah, links. Uh, Arizona's got a link in it in the details. For some reason, it's not sharing it. And I wanted to see. Hopefully, it. I'm able to share your. Um, I know it's brand new and it's not done, but it's so beautiful. I wanted to. Yeah, and that's having, your website. Yeah, that's my website. So we're having. Uh, you know, again, you want to talk about challenges. Today has been a very challenging day <laughs> to get this thing to work. So I have a place on her now. I do exist. I have a website. I have a domain name, um, KarenBeachen.com. So uh, you know, if you are interested, um, you know, yeah, I I would think it'd be a great challenge to do. Um, if you got, and I think also too with the fact that you're taking, you're talking about things that you love, you probably have a lot of the pictures in your cameras anyway. For for that, so it's not as if again you gotta like oh my goodness I gotta go to go take a picture of you know your favorite book you know because that's the what's that's what's day one challenges so what's your favorite re reading material so it could be a book could be a magazine could be my iPad could be my Kindle you know just whatever you define as reading material so it's not it's not gonna it's not that difficult um, it's not unfortunately um, Arizona is not taking a hundred pictures of water. I, I, to me, that would be kind of challenging. It, it really is a lot easier than it sounds. It's not nearly as daunting as it sounds. But the idea is that to join the community is that you get a little bit of an extra flavor. Not only are you posting publicly, but you also get to join this community. And the idea of the community is that you can't be a blue head, so you got to be a real person. And you actually have to post at least once so that I know you're actually taking up on the challenge. So you can't just join and just kind of watch other people you actually have to participate so that's what the that's the reason why for the community you don't necessarily get in the, the first day I gotta see if you guys should post so and I think Arizona and Rain are like okay I'm gonna have, now I have to go post something here which is basically day one is a book or, or reading material I'll get it ready <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to it I really am and you I can't pin it in the comment stream but Jose Gomez has posted a picture saying, looking forward to day one challenge. <laughs> he is actually, Jose, I've never met you and you're watching. I'm so happy to meet you. Um, he is out in Spain and he's been one of my number one supporters. We met literally when I started taking pictures with uh, the first challenge in November. And he's been kind of you know rocking and, and rawing me along all the way as I do for him. And so when I asked him about it, he said yes. And I've never talked to this man, and one day I will. But he <laughs> has been a blessing. So thank you so much, Jose. <laughs> Fantastic. And we're actually, we've gone a little bit over, ladies. So yeah, we have. probably, <laughs> it's been a lot of fun, and I'm looking forward to this to the community and the challenge, Karen. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Yes, thank you mm -hmm. so much for being with us. And Rain, thank you for being a tremendous co-host again. Thank you. And, and thank you, audience. Thank you, audience, so much.
we have a lot. I've been watching the comments. We have had so many great comments going back and forth. Yay! <laughs> so until next week, uh, I'm Arizona Low, and this is Thinking Out Loud, and we'll see you next week. Bye, y'all.